all of us. It's about predicting where the consumer is going and getting half of it right. One of the things we want to do is create ads that don't suck. Embracing change creates great possibility. I'm Alan Hart, and this is Marketing Today. Today on the show, he's back. Bob Hoffman, third time as guest on Marketing Today. And I encourage you to go back and check those episodes. It's episode 70, talking about Bad Men, his last book. And episode 36, where we actually took on the agency functions, function by function, and what the challenges were, as he saw it. So if you know Bob, he's kind of like the friendly curmudgeon for the industry. Extremely bright. I think it's a point of view that we all need to at least hear. If we don't agree with it, that's one thing, but at least hear it. So we're going to take on his newest book, which is Laughing at Advertising, and a great gift idea for the peers in marketing that you know. Not your boss, for sure, but definitely your peers. And if you're an agency folk out there, it's a book for you, too. Makes you laugh, makes you cringe. Today, Bob and I take on the ANA, the FBI, and a lot more. I hope you enjoy this, hopefully not too explicit, Marketing Today with Bob Hoffman. Well, Bob, welcome back. It's a third time is the charm, I'm guessing. Or, or three strikes and you're out. I don't know, one or, <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> well, how are you? How are you? Hey, I'm on the Marketing Today podcast. How bad could I be? doesn't get any better than this. Actually, uh, I'm uh, transcendent. I don't know what that means, but I always hear people say it, so uh, I'm going to go with it, okay? Okay, I like it. Okay. I like it. yeah. Oh. yeah. You've been uh, uh, quite the busy person. You've been speaking, writing, blogging. And, sleeping, uh, yeah. Sleeping, yeah, yeah. I'm sure yeah. drinking is in there, too. Drinking and napping, <laughs> yeah. well, even showering every now and then, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad for all of us <laughs> yeah. on that note. But you also contributed to some serious works recently, the book Eat Your Greens from the APG in the UK. So you hanging out with Brits now? No, I don't know. They, you know, I guess they wanted like 35 uh, intelligent people and one idiot blogger to contribute. <laughs> and uh, I was the idiot blogger. So that was nice. Actually, uh, some smart people in there. It's definitely a, it's a star studded list. You, yeah. you're, you're among a great company. Yeah. And I, I have to add a plug. I mean, a few podcasts. Uh, folks have been in there. So Byron Sharp and yeah. uh, Mark Ritson. There's yeah, a new too. one that we haven't released yet with Richard uh, Shoten, who oh. was also in the book. Yeah. Another very, very smart guy. Yeah. 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 His book is terrific. Yeah, it is. It is. We're going to be talking about that shortly, shortly yeah. on the podcast. Yeah. So I guess, you know, one, I should say congrats again, because you've just released another book. Thank you. Laughing at Advertising. Yeah. I just released it a few weeks ago. Seems to be doing quite well. And uh, it was fun. Well, and it, it's a compilation of your writing, I'm guessing mostly from the blog. Yes. How would you describe it to other people? I would describe it as the silliest, most injudicious, and perhaps irresponsible marketing book you've ever read. It's intentionally meant to be silly. And uh, I hope it's funny, but you know, you never know with funny, right? Funny is like so, so personal. And it's really scary to write something that you think is funny and then you find out it isn't. But, you know, I'm hopeful that people will find parts of it funny at least. Yeah. Well, I found myself laughing for most of the book. That's great. Oh, you know, but you're a, not just saying that because of the check I sent you, right? You really no, no, that. no. That helps, of course. Uh, okay. but yeah, no, 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 no. Okay. no I was. It was. Good. It was funny. I mean, and there's moments too. You know this about your own yeah. writing, where you yeah. go, "Ooh, yeah, yeah, that that is us." Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, uh, sometimes uh, self-realization is an ugly thing. Yeah. You know, I. Oh, that's right. We do do that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. You know, I'm hoping that among all the silliness, there is also some value in it for people in marketing and advertising who can, who can say, yeah, why are we doing this? And that would be great. That'd make me feel good. 
why write this book now? Why come out with this book? Oh, why now? Because the marketing and advertising industry, I believe, have become overrun with humorless, somber, flat tires who take themselves very seriously and think what they're doing is very important. And they and we pretend we know so much and we really know so little. So I think the industry needs a good kick in the ass. (laughs) <laughs> and that's what the book is intended to do. I, you know, as we discussed the last time I, you, you very thoughtfully had me on your podcast, I look at my job as being subversive. I think the industry needs some subversive voices who are willing to challenge uh, the aristocrats. <laughs> and you look at the, what these people have done. The agency business is a disaster and marketers are completely confused. And yet these same people are still drawing big salaries and other people listen to them. And so that's why I thought it was important to, I didn't think it was important. I just wanted to write the book. Also, writing my last book, which is Bad Men, Mm -hmm. was a very dispiriting experience to me because there's so much, there's so much bad stuff going on that's related to advertising and marketing. I just felt like I needed a little something a little lighter for my own mental health something that would be more fun to do i agree if you put bad men together with laughing at advertising you've got the mixings of a bipolar disorder just yeah. <laughs> yes i do i mean yes we do yeah <laughs> well i was reading the about bob section which is at the front of this uh-huh yeah you're in that well, yeah, I'm in. I'm, I'm in one of the reviews, yeah, yeah. Admin, which I loved. But yeah, yeah, uh, great, great. It's always nice to see your name in print. Go ahead. But, you were going to ask a question. I'm well, sorry. I just this woman Sharon Krinsky. Yeah, she really, she really nailed you. She said, you know, yeah. Bob, he's really a nice guy who wants you to think he's a prick. Yeah. Here's the the funny thing is that Sharon was president and head creative at our agency for many years and worked with me. And when she starts, she was only one of two people I ever hired in my career who was a beginner. She hadn't worked in advertising and she wrote a letter that went to the associate creative director of our agency. And he took it and he brought it to me, he says, you have to read this. So I read the letter and it made me laugh so much that I hired her. So here's the funny part of that story. So I come into this agency brand new as the creative director. And I immediately hate the creative department. I just didn't like the work they were doing and what was going on. And so I was a real pain in the ass. So I find out 25 years later, Sharon tells me that they had one evening, they had a meeting, they all went out and they, they, it wasn't a meeting, it was a bar crawl, you know, (laughs) and they all got drunk and they were sitting around and just ripping me to shreds. He's such a jerk. He's such a jerk. And Sharon said, you know, he's not, he's really a nice guy. He just wants you to think he's a prick. And <laughs> that was like one of the nicest things that anyone ever said about me. For some reason, I really like that. No, I think it's true. I think she nailed you. Yeah. You may not think so, but I, I think you're a nice guy. Thank you. Yeah. So there's two people in the world who think I'm nice. <laughs> Well, um, you know, like I said, I did laugh most of the way through, except for a couple of those cringe moments. (laughs) But I want to talk about this one entry because it's called uh, Advertising's Final Solution. Yeah. And essentially, I don't know if you want to set this up, but I was doing some research and it looked like it came from 2010. I I guess the original solution. But do you want to set it up? Yeah, it, it, it was an agency that claimed that they had developed some software that could write ads. Right. And this was before we called that artificial intelligence. In those days, we just called it software. They made this claim that they could, they had software that could write ads. It was fantastic. It's comical because yeah. that was eight years ago and we were, you know, it was the hot new thing, right? Or yeah. Is AI or software going to put us out of business? And it flash forward eight years, the conversation is back. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same exact conversation. Right. And that keeps happening in the marketing world. Despite all the baloney we've been hearing for the past 10 years that turned out to be completely wrong, 
you know, television is dead, advertising is going to die, and the, the web is going to democratize the world. We're still hearing the same bullshit. It doesn't change. Nobody learns anything. It's amazing to me. I keep reading stuff and I say, is this 2009? Where am I? <laughs> I don't know. Is it just me or, or do you feel the same way? No, I, I do. I do. You know, it's call it shiny object syndrome or squirrel yeah. disease or I don't know what it is, but we love new things and we forget to focus on what works. Yeah, we hide behind the new right? We hide behind, oh, this is going to change. You have to be ready for this because living in the future is great. You don't have, there's no fact checking in the future. So if you just <laughs> keep talking about the future, you can't fact check the future. Oh, this is going to happen. Then that's going to happen. Then this, then that's going to happen. And by the time it doesn't happen, nobody cares anymore. They've forgotten. They're onto new things that are not going to happen. You know, if you're a marketing person, and you want to avoid being responsible for it, just keep talking about the future. It's great. <laughs> you, you sound like you know what you're talking about. Nobody, you know, how can they refute what you're saying about the future? So it's, yeah, it's a great place to hide. The future is the place to be. Now, I have to fact check you there because <laughs> the facts don't matter. They don't matter to many people in our country today. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> in today's terms, too. So, well, I was busting a gut on many of these entries. And then you follow this one up. So with Marcel invites 80,000 to Cannes. Yeah, I like <laughs> that idea. I and thought that was a funny idea. That Marcel, right? Because they said, we're not sending anyone to Cannes this year. No way. We're going to take the $20 million we piss, off, piss away at Cannes and we're going to build an artificial intelligence thing called Marcel. It's going to, it's going to connect all... 80,000 people on the company. And, and then Marcel goes and invites everyone to come. I think that was a funny <laughs> idea. I mean, this is another thing. Here's how we get so sidelined by this tech of believing that connecting 80,000 people and uh, who is a publicist, right? And that this is going to make a huge difference, so much more creativity. How, how does that make more creative? I don't understand. Creativity is a girl sitting at a desk writing interesting things. That's creativity. Not 80,000 people connected on some artificial intent. That doesn't create anything. All that does is confuse people. It makes for confusion. I don't understand what they're thinking. And maybe I just don't get it. But honestly, I don't get it. I don't see how it's going to do anything. They're a lot smarter than me. So maybe they know what they're doing. I don't know. Well, yeah, I, with Marcel, I have no idea. I think I know what they were trying to do besides capitalize on AI is try mm. to figure out, can they figure out a way to work better together, potentially, if I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. But that's a human problem, I think, not a AI problem. Yeah, I don't see how that is going to help. People either have good ideas or they don't. They're either smart or they're not. And inviting 80,000 people to contribute to an idea Seems like a non-productive exercise to me. Yeah. Well, as I read this one, this entry in particular, I was sitting there going, have you ever wanted to work for The Onion? Do you know The Onion? Yeah, I know The Onion. No, I wouldn't work for them. They don't pay well. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> Hell no. Well, it looked, it was like reading an Onion article. That's how. <laughs> yeah. Is it just me or did they used to be a lot funnier than they are now? I think they think they they take themselves a little too serious now. Which yeah, is funny they, in itself. yeah, they used to be very funny, and like the stuff I've seen recently has not been quite as. I wonder if they've lost some people, or an editor has has left or something, Possible. because it doesn't seem like quite as as appointed and and funny as it once was. You know what? They had a marketing on the show. A while back, I can't remember, uh -huh. it may have been about a year ago. And they've started creating a content studio like all the other publishers to sure. sell stuff. So maybe they've become commercial. Well, they can't uh, make fun of too many people because those people are potential clients, right? Yeah, yeah that fuzzy editorial yeah. advertising. Yeah. That's why I can say whatever I want, because I don't care. I don't have clients, so I don't <laughs> care. So I can say what you're thinking, but you can't say. Right. It's the great freedom of being unemployed. Yeah. Well, I want to tell all the listeners that if you're looking for a great gift for a friend, either in advertising or marketing, I think this book is it. 
they'll be laughing and hurting themselves. Most likely. I hope, I hope they laugh. I hope they don't hurt themselves because I don't need a lawsuit on my hands. No. No. <laughs> the only thing I would say is don't give it to your boss. Yeah, I think you're right. I have a few other books that you shouldn't give to your boss either. But uh, do you have any other gift ideas for agency people? For agency people or marketers or marketers. Boy, you know, I'm terrible at gifts. In my family, we don't hardly give each other gifts because <laughs> we hate them. So you you go out and you and you find something you think is beautiful or great, and you give it, and the person pretends they really like it, and everyone's uncomfortable. So <laughs> we're not great on gift things. I'm particularly bad. I have no idea what other people like. I don't really like getting gifts. I'd rather give me the money. I'll go buy myself something. I know <laughs> what I want. The, another sweater? Seriously? I don't have enough sweaters? <laughs> That's what it, that's what it usually comes down to with me is like I'm an unpleasant person to have to deal with. You even <laughs> you try to be nice to me it doesn't work. You can't even give me a gift. Yeah. Well, for some reason I'm picturing you in a like Mr. Rogers cardigan sweater. <laughs> yeah. Dress yourself and putting your tennis shoes on. <laughs> Yeah, that's a funny visual. I like, I like. He was such a nice guy, wasn't he, Mr. He Rogers? Was. Yes, he was. He was. He I was. miss that guy. He was so nice. No, I wish I, I wish I could be that nice. Can't believe they turned him into a tiger, an animated tiger with yeah. the Daniels, whatever it is. That's the new Mr. Rogers. Essentially, it's the Mr. Rogers formula adapted. Uh huh. Anyway, I haven't seen it. Yet. I digress. You must have kids, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I have, well, she's older. She's out of that phase now. She's 11 now. But yeah, we went through oh, the Daniels. Oh, you're going into the really trouble period now. Yes. Oh, Your yeah. next five years are going to be a joy. Yeah. I've got an option on an apartment, so I don't have to be at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, no, I'm just picking. Yeah. Well, since we've got you here, I thought yes, sir. you love to comment. So let's take Hold some on news. a second. Hang on a second. <laughs> Last time you had me talking about like the end of Western civilization. That wasn't my idea. That was your idea. That was my gonna, idea. What are you going to ask me about today? Like quantum theory or something? Am I supposed <laughs> to know that? Well, we could start with finite and infinite games and game theory and move yeah. on. Yeah. No, yeah. no, I think we'll take some more fun ones like news okay. headlines. Okay. So Good. Facebook's got a new CMO, in yeah. Antonio yeah. Lucio, I think is how you say his last name. What do you think? I think that's the worst job in the world. I hope he's going to make a lot of money because <laughs> he has the world's worst job. I know nothing about the guy, but Facebook is a horror story. By the way, did you watch the PBS thing this week, the Facebook dilemma? I did not, no. Okay, a Frontline did a two-part show on Facebook. And it is a horror story. And Facebook is finally, people are finally getting to realize how irresponsible and dangerous this thing is. And they actually have blood on their hands. You know, I've been writing bad things about Facebook for years, but Frontline really nailed it. So anyway, getting back to this guy and his job. I mean, he's dealing with creeps and liars, and he has to somehow make them look good in the eyes of the world, and the world is turning hard against them. So yeah. this guy has a very difficult job, and I don't envy him, and I hope he's making a lot of money because he's going he's gonna to <laughs> suffer a lot, I believe. No, I, I, I think you're right. I've heard him speak and maybe had one very quick interaction with him. And I, I just took away that he's a really stand up guy. But I in that environment, I don't I don't think it's you can solve the woes with one person. So no, I mean, if you watch this frontline show, they have some of their executives speak on camera. And they're so unimpressive. It's just one cliche after another. Well, yeah, we have to have a conversation about that. And I mean, it's, it's just pathetic. And Zuckerberg had no idea what he was doing. He is, you know, I wrote a piece last year called Zuckerberg Has to Go. And he just has no clue about what they are visiting on the world and the amount of oversight that Facebook needs that it's not getting. 
this is going to be, this is, you know, when people write the history of this era, Facebook is going to be a horror story. Mm. Well, let's, let's move on from that. <laughs> from that, that happy. That, that, that happy, exciting topic. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the ANA and <laughs> oh, those guys and the Masters of Marketing Conference. So, and they developed five tenets for driving growth. They were five tenets. Okay. Five tenets, you know, data and technology. Of course. Talent and capability. Yeah. Customer centricity, yeah. brand experience and innovation, and then the last one is society and sustainability. Well, which cliches did they neglect to include in their five tenets? I mean, this is like there's apple pie and the motherhood, right? Well, the the funny thing is, like, I applaud the thought process, at least not maybe not the outcome, but like, because I agree with you, these are all the platitudes that we could just read on headlines today. But, you know, what are they going to do about it? And it looks like that they are setting up some sort of like university or some sort of development capability in combination with the ANA and others. And there's a part of me that wonders, you know, is this... All of these large companies, because most of the CMOs on this panel, I believe all of them are from large companies. Yeah. They're just outsourcing talent development. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what any of this. Yeah, I don't understand the politics behind any of this stuff. I'm, I, I was never good at that. Yeah, I don't know what they're up to other than, like you said, it's just one platitude after the next. What do you learn from their five tenets? I don't right. know. If you didn't know that already, what's in it? You know, the ANA, as far as I'm concerned, the ANA are perpetrators of tracking and surveillance marketing, and they are the force behind ad tech, which has enabled so much of the corruption that we see in the online industry that, in fact, now they are being victimized by if they had any kind of integrity, they would stand up and say, ad tech has been a disaster. We need to end it. It confused everyone. And because it confused everyone, that's the essence of, of what makes corruption work. When everyone is confused, when no one really knows what's going on, it's very easy to con people. And that's what happened. The ANA got conned by agencies who were taking money that they were not entitled to. And the right. reason for it was that the people in the ANA, the marketing people, the CMOs, they don't understand what's going on in ad tech. Nobody understood it. It's like uh, there were 10 people in the world who could understand the whole system and how it was working. And the CMOs weren't. And, and as a result of that, they got taken. And now, you know, there's the FBI investigation going on. And that's not going to be pretty. I think uh, it's a bad... It's a mess. It's a bad time for the advertising industry. It's a bad time for the marketing industry. Right, right. Well, you brought up the FBI investigation. Do you think marketers and the ANA should cooperate with the investigation? Yeah, of course they should cooperate. I mean, if crime was committed, we need to know it. And criminals need to be punished. Now, some will be afraid to cooperate because they were asleep at the wheel and they let this happen because they didn't know what was going on, at which they should have known. And they forced agencies to some extent into ad tech. And now they're paying the price for it. And not just now, but for a long time, they paid the price for it because agencies were taking advantage of them. I believe we'll know when the FBI investigation is complete. But the ANA's investigation made it very clear. They, they said that Corruption was, quote, pervasive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to some extent, they have no one to blame but themselves. That doesn't excuse the agencies that were taking money, you know, that were taking kickbacks and were doing unpleasant things with their clients' money. Doesn't yeah. excuse them. But the ANA, they're responsible too. No, I agree. I agree. And well, it, it really is. I mean, the people that are getting screwed are not the Fortune 500, it's the Fortune 1000 and below, right? Yes. Yeah. They don't have the power to negotiate those settlements. Right. It's the advertisers who were taken advantage of it and who weren't smart enough to figure out. Well, none of them were smart enough to figure out what's going on. But some of them had the leverage once they found out to get money back. Now they're, uh, you know, I'm sure there will be lawsuits once the FBI investigation 
is done if the FBI finds wrongdoing. In addition to criminal charges, there could be civil lawsuits. And I will not be at all surprised if that happens. I wrote a piece about, uh, you know, this is a kind of a related topic last Sunday on my newsletter, about how the brands just were clueless about that. not just the brands, the agencies. If you think about how reporters, we've had scandal after scandal in the advertising business, particularly related to online. We have, we have fraud, we have social influencer, you know, con games. We have all this stuff going on and none of it has ever been revealed by an agency. The agency people are the closest to this they should know. If anyone should know, they should know. And right. yet it's, it's reporters sometimes working on their own with no assets to work with who aren't experts in this field who find this stuff out. How could the agencies not know this? And the right. answer is they didn't want to know. They don't want to know. It's fear of finding out. They really right. don't want to know too much. Yeah. No, it's it's true. It's true. They're at least seemingly true. Yeah. So... Well, let's switch gears. It may be just equally as bad, but what's yeah. the most absurd thing you're thinking about right now? Oh, boy. The most absurd thing I'm thinking about right now is, why, you know what would be great? You know, it would be <laughs> terrific absurdity that would like make a, like a close the circle here. If Martin Sorrell in his new company bought WPP, that I would love to see. <laughs> he bought it back, right? Th that would be great. Right. That would be absurd in a way that would be very uh, satisfying to me. I would like That's that. That's like for, for those in the U.S. that are listening to this, that would be like, this is a bad analogy, but Papa's come home, right? With yeah. Papa John's. and, and Yeah, Papa right, Papa right. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would like to see that. That would be nice and absurd. <laughs> well, um, a couple of questions here. Wrap this up. Okay. Where in all this sea of information that's out there, Yeah. where do you get What's your best source of information today? I really don't have it. I just make shit up. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Master of alternative facts. Yeah, yeah. It, it works for our president. Why shouldn't it work for me? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, it. I have it on the highest authority that that's how to do things. Actually, I take three new, I still get newspapers. Remember them? I get three a yeah. day. I get the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and the San Francisco Chronicle because I'm here in the Bay Area. And I don't read the news because it's too depressing. But I do read the business parts yep. and, you know, I read the sports and business, the important stuff. And that's where I get a lot of my information. I also, you know, I, I subscribe to some newsletters that have information about uh, advertising and marketing. I think Ad Age has a very good it's called Ad, Ad Age Daily or something like that, mm -hmm. which you can subscribe to, which uh, I find to be very good. You know, some of the trade organizations have newsletters, but they're horrible. Like the AMA has this awful newsletter that it's useless. And the, the four A's have one, but I, I don't even, I unsubscribe to that because all, all it was was PR releases, you know, rewritten mm -hmm. bullshit. So that's where I get, and, uh, you know, I, I troll around the web and, you know, look for articles about advertising. I, I guess Media Week and Marketing Week and things like that. And, uh, All right. Yeah. I got it. Well, last question for you. Yes. Might be a hard one. I don't know. Okay. But is there like an opportunity that you think advertising or marketers should be running to or they should be focused on? Absolutely. I do. It's people over 50. People over 50 are the most valuable market in the history of marketing. They're being completely ignored by our industry. They are responsible for more than 50% of all consumer spending. They buy about 55 to 60% of all cars. They are the number one buyers in virtually every category you can think of home furnishings, travel, food and beverage, and they're being completely ignored. And the marketing industry is obsessed with millennials and God help us, Gen Zs, and completely ignoring the people who have all the money and spend all the money. It's <laughs> ridiculous. And we, we, you know, and it's not just in the U.S. 
globally, right. one of the most remarkable changes in demographics in the history of civilization is going on. In 100 years, listen to this, in 1950, there were three times as many people under five as there were over 65. By 2050, there'll be twice as many people over 65 as there are under five. In other words, the population of the world is aging at a remarkable pace, and no one's paying any attention to it. And for marketers, the opportunity to reach people over 50 is so huge, and only about 10% of all marketing activity is aimed at, at these people. So that's my, that's my tip. I love it. I love it. And it brings me back to your, well, your book before. Um, yeah, Marketers, are, marketers from Mars. are From Mars. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I deal with that subject in that book. And yeah. One of the chapters, I think, is about that. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I mean, it, well, if only there were people over the age of 50 in ad firms, well, that's, ad agents. That's the other thing. In the population as a whole, among adults, 47% of adults are over 50. In the advertising industry, 6% of the population <laughs> is over 50. So right. it's marketing by selfie stick, Alan. That's what, <laughs> that's what we're seeing, marketing by selfie stick and narcissism disguised as strategy. That's how the marketing world is working. Well, it's been a pleasure having you back on. And I hope we did. Well, I know we offended some, oh, I but hope I hope so. a lot more were laughing. You know what? You know, as a writer, it's, it's my job to offend people. If I'm not offending anyone, I'm not doing my job properly. That's how I look at it. And so I, you know, I don't intentionally try to offend people, but I say what's on my mind. And if they're offended, I'm sorry, but they're, I'm not going to stop it. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you, Alan. It's great to be on again. Hi, it's Alan again. Marketing Today was created and produced by me with writing and editing by Kevin Greeley, social media support by Megan Woods, art and graphic design by Sarah Dell. If you're new to marketing today, please feel free to write us a review on iTunes or your favorite listening platform. Don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends and colleagues about the show. I love to hear from listeners. and You can contact me at marketingtodaypodcast.com. There you'll also find complete show notes, with links to anything we talk about on any episode. You can also search our archives. I'm Alan Hart, and this is Marketing Today.